What's up guys? This is my predictions video for UFC Fight Night, Cub Swanson vs. Artem Lobov. So starting with the main card, first Jake Ellenberger vs. Mike Perry. Probably the hardest fight to call on the whole card because of their abilities to knock anybody out. They both have extreme power, they both like to exchange punches, boxing heavy even though Ellenberger is an underrated wrestler but he hasn't been using it at all lately. Mike Perry likes to stand in your face, trade shots, throw bombs. He has a very good chin, amazing ability to take shots but he has a very poor ability to get away from shots, which is very dangerous against a guy like Ellenberger who hits very hard. He might hit harder than Mike Perry, but Ellenberger doesn't have the ability to take a shot like Perry. But I believe Perry's boxing technique is a bit better than Ellenberger's. I believe he's a little bit faster, he's younger, a little more athletic, but Ellenberger does have the wrestling offense advantage, but Perry also has a good wrestling defense. So this should be a very interesting fight. Either of these fighters can win this fight. But I'm going to predict Mike Perry wins by a first round knockout. And very well might be the fight of the night. Then we go to Joe Lozon versus Stevie Ray. Both very technical fighters. Very well rounded in all areas. Joe Lozon though is very dangerous. He's almost like a daredevil. He doesn't care what happens in there. He even stated that he doesn't care about being the champion. He doesn't care about anything like that. He just wants to put on good fights. And when you fight someone who thinks like that... It's always going to be dangerous because he doesn't care. He's going to go for the finish no matter what it takes. No matter what he has to go through, he's going to go and try to do it. He has very wild, dangerous striking. He can knock out anybody. He's the only guy to knock out Diego Sanchez by strikes in his whole career. But his jiu-jitsu is also just as dangerous. He's very technical, but very dangerous. He's like a snake on the ground. Stevie Ray is a bit more of a safe fighter. He likes to take it slow a little bit in the beginning. Although he's very technical himself and very calculated. But people who approach fights like that, who want to take it a little bit slower, a little bit safer against Joe Lozon, he usually beats them. Like Jens Pulver, like Diego Sanchez even took it a little bit slow, and etc. Many fighters who fight him like that, he usually beats them because he overwhelms them. When he sees you taking it slower, not coming at him, he sees it as an opportunity to overwhelm his opponent. So I see Joe Lozon winning by a decision or a second round submission. Then we go to John Dodson versus Eddie Wineland, both strikers. Predominantly boxing heavy. They both like to throw punches a lot. Defensive wrestlers. John Dodson, probably the fastest and one of the hardest hitters in the bantamweight division. He's extremely hard to take down. Very fast, very explosive. Very short though. He's 5'3", but he's a little powerhouse. And Eddie Wineland, he's been very up and down in his career lately. And his ability to take shots has been deteriorating a lot. So in this fight, I see John Dodson catching Eddie Wineland and finishing him probably in the first or second round by knockout. And then we go to Ovin St. Pru versus Marcos de Lima. Very hard fight to call because of the reasons in the Ellerberger and Perry fight. Both can knock each other out. OSP is more of a well-rounded fighter. He's a lot better on the ground. His ability to submit people is actually pretty interesting. But he's very wild on the feet. His punches come out from so far out. He telegraphs his punches, but it's unpredictable too, which is strange. He's coming off a three-loss streak. Two fights ago, he got brutally knocked out by Jimmy Manoa. He's fighting Marcos de Lima, who's a powerhouse. This guy tries to take your head off with everything he throws. When he loses fights, it's usually because his opponents take him down and control him or try to submit him, um, which could be a big problem in this fight. But I believe he has the advantage in the striking. I think his punches, even though they're wild as well, I don't think they're as wild as OSP's. But Marcos de Lima did miss weight by five pounds. So that can also be a factor in the fight. But if I have to predict the fight... I'm going to have to go with Marcos de Lima by a first or second round knockout. I understand OSP can easily win this fight. But I'm going to go on a whim here. I'm going to make it a little interesting. I'm going to go with de Lima. I believe he's going to catch OSP early. I think he's going to catch him on the inside when OSP tries to throw those wide punches. Then we go to the co-main event, Eli Quinta versus Diego Sanchez. I Quinta has been out for two years. And his last win was actually against Jorge Masvidal. Remember how long ago that was when he started going off on the crowd? Yeah, that was his last fight. That's a good win to come off, especially from a layoff. If you're going to come off a layoff, it's better to come off from a win against a good opponent. He's very well-rounded. He's good with his wrestling and his striking. He's good at controlling opponents on the ground. He's a bit younger than Diego Sanchez in fighting years. Hasn't been in nearly as many wars. And Diego Sanchez is as veteran as you can get. This guy's been through wars and wars. I think it's starting to show. He's very dangerous in all areas, although most of his abilities come on the ground. But he's been trying to knock people out, stand with them, and he's been losing because of that. He is elite 
in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, especially in MMA. But I don't see him taking that route in this fight. I think he's going to try to stand with Al Quinta. I think Al Quinta will be able to outstrike Diego Sanchez. My prediction for the fight is going to be Al Quinta by a decision. And then we go to the main event, Cub Swanson versus Artem Lobov. What do you want to say about this fight? Um, Cub Swanson, one of the best featherweights in the world, number four, versus Artem Lobov, who's 2-2 two and two in the UFC, coming off two wins, not ranked at all. I mean, I believe, as many do, I believe this is somewhat of a mismatch. Cub Swanson is very dangerous, especially on the feet, and that's where Artem likes to keep it. Throws wild punches, but very effective. He's very fast, though. His footwork is really good. He moves in and out very well, and his ground game is underrated. I think he's a black belt in jiu-jitsu, and he's fighting Artem Lobov. He has some power in his hands. He has a very pressuring style, similar to Conor McGregor's. He likes to pressure you against the cage and use that very long stance to try to draw you in. But here's the problem with him doing that against Cub Swanson. Swanson has a 5-inch reach advantage, and Artem is 1 inch taller than Cub Swanson. So Artem is going to be the one to come in. He wants to come in. Artem has a 65-inch reach, which is shorter than Demetrius Johnson's. You know, that's crazy. Artem is also very tough, though. He has a very good ability to take a shot, although he did get dropped and hurt badly in his last fight against uh, Ishihara. But Cub Swanson, I believe, hits harder than anybody Artem has fought. And if Cub Swanson wants to take it to the ground... I don't think there's much Artem can do to him. I think Cub Swanson will be a bit better than Artem in all areas. Although I do give Artem a chance on the feet if they get in close range. In close range, on the feet, he might be better than Cub Swanson. But everywhere else, I think Swanson beats him handily. So in this fight, I'm going to go with Cub Swanson by a second round KO or submission. So those are my predictions. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And make sure you guys comment below on your guys' predictions. I'm very curious to see what you guys think. Early next week, I'm going to make a breakdown video on one of the fights of the card. So be on the lookout for that. And make sure you guys watch the fights this weekend. And thank you guys again so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.